Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm using three new stamp sets from Mom Elephant. This first one is called Me and My Yeti and it has such cute images for the holidays and winter time. And then along with that theme with winter time, I'm going to use these snowflakes. These are from the Holly's Snowflakes stamp set. And then as far as a greeting goes, I'm going to use one of these from the Puffy Holiday Greetings stamp set. So today's card and post are part of a blog hop for Mama Elephant. So for more info on that, you'll want to be sure to check out my blog. There are giveaways with the blog hop as well. So I'm starting out with some watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is from Fabriano, and this is their extra white paper. And I'm first going to stamp some of the trees from that Yeti stamp set. I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it's a permanent black ink and works well with watercolor. I'm going to be doing some watercolor over the top and I want to make sure that the ink doesn't bleed or smear or smudge. So I've stamped those trees along the side and now I'm going to stamp the Yeti on a separate piece of watercolor paper. And this watercolor paper is just just the right size for him and I'm using that size because I'm going to cut it out eventually. And I did stamp the Yeti twice because I didn't get a very good impression the first time. So I moved that magnet over a little bit so that I could really press down on that hand and I got a much better impression. So I did do uh, that stamping twice to get a really nice black line. So I'm going to do a little bit more stamping. I'm now using some plain white cardstock. This is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I'm using one of the greetings from that puffy greeting stamp set. And it just says holiday hugs from many miles away. And I'm going to stamp this a couple times because I didn't get a really good impression. So I'm going to move that magnet out of the way and I'm just nestling that cardstock in the corner of my Misty tool. Sometimes these stamps that are brand new are really, really sticky. They really like to stick to your acrylic block, which is great, but sometimes they'll stick to your cardstock too and it pulls up the cardstock when you take away the stamp. So sometimes the magnet doesn't really, it's not strong enough. So I like to just put things in the corner of my misty tool. So I've taped down my watercolor piece down to a hard board here and I've also taped off the very bottom below the trees and that's just because I'm going to preserve that area at the very bottom. I want it to be completely white and instead of using this liquid masking fluid all the way on the bottom, I thought I'd go ahead and just mask it off with tape and then just use the masking fluid to mask off the trees. So it's just a little bit easier to do it that way. I'm using my Magello Mission Gold watercolors today and I'm first going to wet this entire area first. I'm going to add a couple different strokes um, going horizontal and then vertical. I want it to get pretty wet. And then I'm going to be using three colors from this palette. I'm going to use a nice blue, a purple, and a pink. And I'm going to actually speed up the video process here in a minute, but I wanted you to see how quickly this color kind of moves within the water. And this is in real time right now, and um, I just wanted to show you how quickly those colors kind of mix and blend with each other. So I'm adding a little bit of purple to that, and I'm going to bring in um, lots more purple and lots more pink. So I'm mostly just wanting to get a nice layer of color. So the technique I'm doing today, um, I'm calling, let's see, what did I call it? Layered resist, let's see. <laughs> layered resist watercolor or something like that. Um, I'm basically going to do a layer of a watercolor that's kind of kind of pale colors and you can see that this is the first layer and those colors really blend and soften once I dry them with my heat tool. And then I'm going to take off some of the masking tape because I'm going to be moving this watercolor paper around and I want, didn't want it on the board anymore. So if you are doing this, you might have to sacrifice some tape um, to do this technique, but I think it looks really cool. So I have that one layer of watercolor and it's completely dry. And I'm now I'm putting some powder tool over that entire area. And this is just to prep it for lots and lots of stamping. So then I took a bunch of snowflakes from that Holly's Snowflake stamp set. And I placed them on the sky area. And I'm going to lift up this door and it, those stamps, like I said before, are kind of sticky. They stick to everything. So um, 
it wasn't a huge deal for this just because um, the stamps aren't in any precise place. So I was able to just position that watercolor paper after I lift it up. Then I use some Versamark ink, which is a great ink for heat embossing. Um, the ink stays wet and sticky for a little bit longer than regular inks, so it gives you plenty of time to apply your embossing powder. So I'm going to actually stamp this a couple times because that watercolor paper is quite textured and sometimes it doesn't get a really good impression. So I'm going to stamp this twice uh, in the same area. And that magnet at the very bottom was just enough to hold it in place. Then I'm going to apply some clear embossing powder. This is some detail embossing powder from Ranger. It's just clear. And I'm sprinkling that on and I'm purposely avoiding the tree area because that masking fluid stays pretty tacky. And I didn't want the embossing powder to stick to that. So then I heat set this with my heat tool until the, those lines were smooth and melted. And then I went right back into the watercolor. I did a coat of water over the entire area. And now I'm dropping in some very intense colors. I'm not spreading them out a lot. I'm mostly just wanting to get those colors on and have them be very, very saturated. And I want the colors to kind of blend into each other. And the thing that's really cool about this layered embossing watercolor is that now those lighter areas um, underneath the snowflakes are trapped by the clear embossing powder. And the watercolor that's put on top is repelled by that embossing powder, the melted embossing powder, the slick surface of the melting embossing powder. So it basically preserves those lighter areas, but only in the areas that are stamped. So it's really kind of cool. I'm going to get a couple different color variations going because of this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually set this aside to dry. So I'm sopping up some of that color that's coming off the edge because I don't want it to kind of bleed back into the painting. So I'm sopping that up and I, then I set it aside to dry. Then I painted the Yeti and this little guy is so cute. So I started by wetting his face and adding some pink. And then I added some pink to the hearts on his hands as well. And I really wanted to have this Yeti mimic the same colors that are in the background. So while I am going to be painting him sort of like a grayish color, I am going to bring in some areas with other colors. So once an area is kind of wet with color, then I can drop in other colors. So you notice I put a little bit of yellow down on that one side and I'm going to start adding additional colors as well. So like there's a little bit of purple right there. Um, and some green. I mostly just want to get some kind of different areas of color kind of peeking in and watercolor is super fun to do with this because the colors can layer and overlap and create really interesting variations. So I was actually at a Mama Elephant event this last weekend with a few of my friends and Kathy Verkusen was there for her um, daily marker coloring challenge road trip and she was coloring a Yeti and I really loved what she did. She did kind of like some gray colors and then she brought in some unexpected colors. And I was really inspired by that. So that's where I got the idea to bring in those colors on other areas of the Yeti. So I'm bringing in just little colors, darkening up some areas. I'm not being super precise with this. I just don't want any really harsh lines. So I am going to bring in some additional colors. I'm gonna bring in some purple and some blue and some pink. And I mostly just, like I said before, I want to mimic the colors that are in that background because I don't want the Yeti to just be, uh, you know, just all a big blob of gray. I want him to have a little bit of character too. So I'll bring in some really strong color and then clean off my brush and get it wet. And then I can soften those edges by just going over that area. And that really strong color really, it spreads quickly. So only a very small amount of paint on your brush is needed. So bring in a little tiny bit of purple and then I can spread that out with a clean, wet paintbrush. So my Yeti's pretty much almost done. I'm just adding a little pink up at, uh, by the forehead. And then I'm going to hit it with my heat tool to make sure everything is completely dry before I move on. I'm going to take some scissors and fussy cut around the Yeti because he's going to be popped up off this, the surface of the card. So I'm going to cut right up to the very edge of this stamped image. And once it's all cut out, then I can go around the edges with a black marker. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So I'm going to use a Memento Tuxedo black marker. You can use any black marker for this. A brush tip. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. This is a really long video. Um, a brush tip works best because it's easier to kind of paint the edges. You're basically just trying to fill in those gaps between the stamped line and where you cut. So I'm just making sure that, I, that everything's in the right placement. And then I'm going to peel off that blue masking tape. And then I'll also use an adhesive eraser from Xyron. And I'm just going to pick up that masking fluid that I painted on earlier. You don't have to use an adhesive eraser for this. You can definitely just rub it with your fingertips. But I find that it's a little bit faster and it picks it up easier by using this adhesive eraser. So I'm going to paint the little trees that are at the very bottom. And for the trees to get a little bit of color variation, I dropped in a plain green color. And then I grabbed that same blue that I've been using and added the blue to just little corners of the trees. And I just let that paint kind of spread out as it dried and I got some really fun variation in color. So I trimmed down this entire background piece. It is now the exact size of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. Speaking of the card, I'm going to make the card base now. I'm using some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock for this. And I've scored it at five and a half to create a top folding card. Then put some Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back of the watercolor piece and place that directly over the top of the card front. And I'll press that down so it's nice and sturdy and there's no warping from that watercolor. So the last thing to do is to place the Yeti over top uh, of that kind of line of trees. And then I decided to put that greeting up there at the top, kind of centered. So that's the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. It gave you some ideas on how to create a nice winter sky. Once again, make sure you check out my blog for all the blog hop info as well as the giveaways. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.